my name is Amy Hinky, and last week I posted um, some pictures of doing uh, Raku with tiny things in the microwave kiln and there was a large response to that so I figured I would record um, some videos today going over like basics what you need to do it where you can get things what worked for me and then also I'll um, try to record a video of doing a firing during planning today um, so this is not a new thing I mean Raku is something that we've pulled from other cultures and then you know kind of made like our western version of it um, but it, the process is basically the same, it's just using a different tool. So instead of using um, a typical kiln or like a trash can style kiln um, outside and removing the pot and then putting it in a reduction chamber, you're just using uh, a microwave kiln instead. So um, the brand that I have is Fuseworks, uh, but there's a lot of different brands and I have a different brand, I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, but I have a different one at home and they work just the same. Um, I would encourage you that if you don't already have one of these, I would shop around and look at the measurements of the inside of the microwave kiln because this surface area right here, the little platform in the middle, um, that's all the space that you have for the width of a piece that you put inside the microwave kiln. So there, this is the smaller microwave kiln um, and I would pay a little more and get a little bit more space. Um, so when I was making pieces uh, to put in here, what I did is I took a ruler and I measured the space that I have. It's like two and three quarters inches wide. And then on the inside, this is the top of the kiln to the top of it, to the bottom, it's about one and three quarters inch. And then I took a quarter of an inch off of that for width and height, because you don't want your piece obviously to touch the top of the inside of the lid or um, the walls. Um, these are made, microwave kilns are made out of different things and there's videos on YouTube. There's a ton of different people that have experimented with this and tried it and um, I didn't pull it up. I meant to pull it up on my computer so I could show you but on YouTube there is a gentleman, his YouTube channel is called Captain Mike, C-A-P-T Mike um, and he's a super nice guy. He's a ceramicist and glass artist um, and he has, I don't even know how many videos, probably like 10 to 12 videos videos on using a microwave kiln and different things you can do with it. Um, technically they're made for glass fusing tiny projects like little cabochons or pendants, um, but it's the same process. It's nothing magical or anything. It's just that you've got this insulating kiln brick like material. Um, it's porous. It's super lightweight. It's like an alumina ceramic uh, fiber. And then on the inside you've got a coating of um, silicone carbide. So it takes the heat from the microwave um, and then it amplifies it. Um, so that is causing this environment on the inside. It's insulated and it's magnifying the heat. So um, like a Raku firing 1800 plus degrees that you're wanting to go for melting your glaze before you remove your pots, you can get to that temperature inside of the microwave kiln. Um, so this is the small one. Um, if you order it on Amazon, um, or I think the Blick catalog has them, um, it'll come in a box like this. And if you get the kit, um, it comes with some other stuff. So you, you can check what you're buying, because if you go with the cheapest one, it's probably just gonna be the kiln. Um, and you can get it at different prices too. Like sometimes it's cheaper on Amazon than it is on Blick, even with a art teacher discount. Um, it'll come, check what yours comes with, but I bought the kit, it was a little over 100, I think. And it was the small kiln. It came with some kiln paper, which I would recommend you to cut little pieces and put underneath your Raku um, projects. You've got a kiln. West You've got, um, usually this one came with like morning, family, morning announcements. Wash or sanitize your hands often. Physically distance yourself from others when possible. Always walk on the right hand side of the hallways, leaving space in the middle. This one came with um, some little fusible glass nuggets, um, some findings for making jewelry. Uh, some dichroic glass and some glass pieces um, so that you can experiment with all of that and I think that's worth it if you've never used one of these before because it gives you some starter stuff to see uh, if you want to experiment with this maybe with students. Um, let me answer that and say in the sink, he's 
everybody's got a call like right when I record a video. Um, and then what else you need to have? Um, we have a kiln shelf and this was just like an old uh, broken shelf. So this um, kiln shelf, you need to have something that you, when you take the microwave kiln out of the microwave, it's gonna be really, really hot. Um, note the over 1800 degrees inside. So you have to have something where you can quickly remove that and then sit it on something that's um, gonna be heat resistant. So I just had a broken piece of kiln shelf, but you could just sit a whole kiln shelf um, outside wherever you're gonna do this and then you've got enough surface area to work with. Um, you need your typical, you know, whatever gloves you're using for your kiln or your typical Raku gloves. Um, I like these. I haven't had any issues with anything exploding or breaking um, when I was handling it, but I think it's better to just be prepared in case something happens. And so the longer gloves will protect your arms too, but obviously you wanna have long sleeves on. Um, I went to Goodwill and I just got like some kitchen and um, grill tongs. So anything that don't get plastic, obviously, things that are gonna be metal um, are what you want. But I found some, the grill tongs are good. Just look for something that if you're thinking about like picking up a small little pot like this, um, that it's gonna grab it easily and not wanna make it like just pop right out and slip out. Um, so I thought these were good. And then I had some kitchen like sort of more like serving tongs, I guess, like those were fine. And they were all like 99 cents at Goodwill. So um, I got that. And then you need your safety glasses and some sort of like metal can, like a big coffee can. If um, Sometimes they have plastic lids, but um, like this one had a plastic lid, so a metal can, and then I have a lid from a pot that's all metal here. Um, if it doesn't make like a tight seal, you can use a, just like with regular Raku when you're doing a reduction atmosphere, um, you can get a damp towel, drape it over the pot and then, or over the can, and then put the lid down on it um, to help keep the smoke inside. Um, I have, I made all these little bowls on the wheel just threw off the hump and um, they're pretty thin so I threw these and then I trimmed them on the bottom just to try to get an even consistency um, and then uh, trimmed a little feet on them just for test bowls so all of these are in the size requirement this one I haven't fired yet I'll fire this one later and record it so this was the first result and I did this one for um, I think it was eight and a half minutes in the kiln and I wasn't really sure you know, with my microwave, I'll go over the wattage on it later in the next video, but um, I wasn't really sure if that was gonna be enough or not, so I was just kind of experimenting. You're just gonna have to test it out with your own microwave and see how it works. Uh, but this was the Mako Classic Crackles uh, Green Tea Glaze, which is not really a Raku glaze, but it's really beautiful, fired. Uh, with Raku techniques. So, and I used um, shredded recycled paper as the combustible material. And then our other glazes for Raku, uh, I just ordered the Amico um, like class pack where it has mixed glazes. Uh, so this one is the Caribbean blue, which this color, um, I got a lot of coppery, you know, like the metallic copper color and green in this one. And last time I used this glaze in a more like a normal traditional Raku firing, I got uh, more blues in it. So just different based on size, space, how quickly I got it into the chamber. And then this one uh, I'm gonna do today, this one is smoky blue, so we'll try this. Um, and I used a Raku, just a regular Raku clay I ordered from Davin's. Um, in Atlanta. So um, that's my Raku clay and it worked out just fine. We use a mid-fire clay in the classroom um, and I've raku with that before and that's been fine as well and it's just like any other Raku like sometimes if you have a low fire clay that has no grog um, it will tend to explode just different clays holding moisture differently. Um, I had some people ask about uh, if I had bisque fired in the microwave kiln and I did experiment with that just a little bit and every result ended up in breakage explosions um, and I had taken I had fired or excuse me thrown it on the wheel a week and a half before I had put it in a toaster oven for 10 minutes before I put it in the kiln let air out just a teensy bit 
and then put it in there and I did a 30 second, 30 seconds in the microwave kiln was enough for it to explode. Um, so after the second time of that happening, after putting it in the toaster oven even longer to try to get rid of the moisture, I figured I could keep experimenting with that to try to bisque fire something in it or I could just fire them in my scut kiln and then proceed forward with glazing. So um, that's what I did. I figure this technique, I mean, you're limited so much by size. I am gonna do uh, microwave kiln raku with my students, but I'm gonna do it with my sculpture two, four, and AP 3D kids. And that's um, a smaller class. I've got 14 kids in there. I'm not doing this with like all of my sculpture kids or whatever, um, because these do have a life, a lifespan. Um, and it's not the same thing as raccooning in um, a more traditional raccoon kiln, whether that's like a homemade trash can style or your regular like scut kiln body and then you're using it for raccoon. Um, the kiln, uh, the outside insulating kiln brick material, this stuff is just as fragile as like what you've got inside your kiln. Like you lean over, you lean on it the wrong way, something hits it, it chips and it breaks. Um, and so you can get cracks through it. Um, this one is the one I've had for a while. I don't even know if you can see it, but it has a crack going through here. Um, and obviously that's another place where the heat is gonna escape. You can also get cracks. I've got a little one right here through the silicone carbide. It's kind of hard to see, um, but that's just from as it heats up and cools down with those extreme temperature changes, um, you can get cracks and breakage through this from expanding and contracting. And um, they, they just don't, you know, last as long because of what they're made out of. So I was reading an article. Someone had one of these, and they kept um, they kept a chart, like a flow chart, of how many firings they had and how long it took to get up to temperature to melt um, the glass in their situation. And the longer they had the kiln, and the more they used it, the longer it took to get to temperature because of things like the kiln getting cracks or whatever, and heat escaping, and it not insulating as well. I think they got something like 280 firings which sounds like a lot but if you've only got one little pendant or one little bowl each time you're doing a firing that's not a lot especially if you're going to use it with like classes of 30 kids each you know 30 60 90 kids um then you're gonna your kiln is gonna have a very short lifespan um so it's something that's i guess sort of fun um i'm using it for our wearables unit we're getting ready to work with polymer clay and glass and then we're going to do raku um pendants for our end of the year unit and we're using it for that just because um raku we have a trash can style kiln that you kind of reach down into and doing anything tiny in it is really hard to grab when it's that hot inside um and our big tongs it's just difficult to grab something um that's that little so i thought i would try this with my small group of kids and see how it works out so i would just take all those things into consideration it's just like a fun little thing to do but probably not the way you'd want to use the materials if you're doing it with like mass amounts of kids um so that's all of the stuff that you need, aside from obviously the microwave. Um, you do get a little bit of smoke uh, coming from the microwave, some fumes when you're firing. So um, like our room, we have a patio outdoor area that our door goes right out onto. And I have the, like, the outdoor outlets out there. So I would move my microwave and all of this stuff and set it up um, outside. So I don't have to worry about you know the art teacher setting off the fire alarm because that would be embarrassing. Um, so if you can think of, I think I covered everything I wanted to talk about, setup, prepping clay, safety. I fired my clay to 04, just a bisque firing, regular bisque firing. Um, and we talked about glazes. I think that's everything I want to talk about for like things. Um, and if you have questions that I did not cover, uh, let me know. But also I just researched on Instagram and YouTube and just Googled stuff for a couple weeks, honestly, taking notes in my sketchbook before I made the bowls and started experimenting with it myself. So I would encourage you just to do some research so that you kind of fully understand, especially if you haven't really done your own raku firings before, so that you really understand the whole process and the things that can go wrong and safety stuff before you just jump into it. But it really is very, very easy. And these kilns, you can get one for like $40 or a whole kit up to like a hundred and something um, and get a nice kiln to play with and practice with.